Greetings, my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ and of the MLS family. I'm Paul Shawe, one of the pastors at St. John's in Bay City, Michigan, and it is my privilege to be with you today and to lead you in your morning chapel. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Word of God, according to the Apostle Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. I thank my God every time I remember you. Every time I pray for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. I am convinced of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I am equally convinced that it is right for me to think this way about all of you, because I have you in my heart. For both in my chains and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all share in this grace with me. Yes, God is my witness of how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And I pray that your love may still increase more and more in knowledge and every insight. This will result in your approval of the things that really matter so that you will be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. With Christmas coming up in a couple weeks, here's something I have observed. Some Christmas gifts are just plain fun and enjoyable, like video games, music, or a new iPhone. Other Christmas gifts are practical. You might get some nice new clothes that you can wear to class or to church services, or maybe even to a job interview. You might get a new computer or tablet that helps you to prepare for school or to stay in touch with others during this time of social distancing. You know, there are a lot of people in this world who are only looking for blessings from God to make their lives on earth more fun and enjoyable. But God wants his people to be blessed. He wants you to be blessed so that your hearts are prepared for Christ's return. The Apostle Paul talks about these blessings from our gracious God in today's reading. The blessing of a faith kept and the blessing of, of a faith expressed. In the first part of our reading, we hear a thanksgiving prayer from Paul. He is thanking God for the Philippians' fellowship in the gospel. Every time Paul prayed for these Philippian Christians, joyful memories filled his mind about them. These joyful memories told Paul this, God the Holy Spirit worked faith in them. A faith that believed that Jesus was their Savior. A faith that believed that in Jesus there was now no condemnation for them, but that they stood not guilty before God. Then Paul continued, I am convinced of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul was certain that 
just as the Holy Spirit brought them to faith in Jesus, so also by the gospel the Holy Spirit will keep them in that faith for the rest of their lives. In the same way, I thank God for you. True, I know some of you personally, though not a lot of you. Still, as a graduate of MLS and one who shows up there from time to time, I know what kind of people you are. Believers in Christ. Yes, God began a good work in you when the Holy Spirit brought you to faith in Jesus by baptism, a faith that you confessed at your confirmation. And I know by God's grace and promise that by the gospel, the Holy Spirit will keep you in that saving faith throughout your life to eternal life. What a great blessing God gives. The blessing of a faith kept. In the second part of our reading, we hear an asking prayer from Paul. He prays for an increase of the Philippians' knowledgeable and insightful love. It's important to understand what Paul is saying when he prays that your love may still increase more and more in knowledge and every insight. You know, some people really don't get love, even if they say love is all you need. God's Word lets us know that love without knowing the Savior and perceiving God's saving will is an unstable emotion. Here this moment, gone the next. Knowing the Savior and perceiving God's saving will is faith. True, lasting love is what faith in Jesus expresses. This love is what faith produces. Love is a fruit of faith. Or as Paul put it in our reading, the fruit of righteousness. And as Jesus told us, those acts of love expressed by faith in Jesus that give glory and praise to God will be the evidence that Jesus points to on Judgment Day that the Philippians and that you and I have faith in Jesus as our Savior, the one who has made us pure and blameless. So I also pray that your love increases. The fact is that you and I are still sinners. Our love will never be perfect in this world. There is still a lot of room for improvement for all of us. And yet, as God strengthens your faith in Jesus by the gospel, he also increases your love and so fills your life with the fruit of righteousness. What is your faith in Jesus telling you? It's telling you to love one another, to speak kindly to one another, to help one another, to forgive one another. What is your faith also telling you? It's telling you to love others, especially those who do not yet know Jesus the Savior and perceive God's saving will. Share your faith with them. Bring the gospel to them. Help them get ready for Christ's return. What a blessing God gives. The blessing of faith expressed. The love produced by faith. For by God's grace and promise, I can assure you, 
that when Jesus comes again, he will point to your acts of love and say, yep, you believe in me as your Savior. You belong to me. Come, live with me forever in heaven. To prepare hearts for Christ's return, God wants his people blessed, keeping us in faith in the Savior and increasing our love which that faith expresses are truly great blessings that our gracious God gives to us, his people. They are blessings that you can enjoy and share. And with that faith kept and that love increased by the gospel, your heart will always be prepared for Christ's return. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Fill our hearts with the enlightening good news of your mighty deliverance. Keep us faithful to your gospel, so that by it your Holy Spirit may ever keep us believing in you and may increase our love for you and one another. Keep us mindful of these great blessings from our Heavenly Father, that we may rejoice at the celebration of your first coming and eagerly wait with prepared hearts for your second coming. Grant us these blessings that come through you, our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And please also join me in praying the modern version of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And may God grant you a blessed day. Amen.